Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Emmanuel Sassy, and today I am reviewing Commandos 2 and Praetorian's HD Remaster Bundle by the Xbox One. This is developed by Pyro Studios and published by Calypso Media. So, what is this bundle all about? Well, this bundle is a collection of real-time strategy games that are almost 20 years old, which have now been given the HD treatment and are making their way onto console. For Commandos 2, the premise is that you are a small crap team of commandos taking on a series of ever harder missions, utilising each character's unique abilities to their fullest effect. Praetorians is all about warlike missions, with you controlling specialised army units, with an emphasis on tactical formations to crush the opponents. Now Commandos 2 boasts 10 missions, 10 unlockable ones, 2 training missions, all across 9 interactive locations based on authentic World War II scenarios, with 9 unique Commandos, each with their own specialised skills. Praetorians boast over 24 campaign missions set in Egypt, Gaul and Italy with three different armies and maps that utilise different terrains and landscapes to tactically control the battlefield. And this leads me on to the gameplay. I'll first start off with Commandos 2. Being a fan of the original, I'm lucky to have a memory of how the game played on PC, and one of its many charms was the ability to tackle any maps and missions how you choose, using the specialists available. The main aim of this game is to take said commandos and use your tactical timing, split second decision making and their unique skills to manoeuvre your commandos into completing tasks and I can tell you it's proper old school fun. Translating that over to console is never going to be an easy task, but here I feel as the developer was rushed into completing some areas. The controls, for instance, do have a nice visual overlay if you want to understand what each element does, and there is a good selection of quick tips on how to different characters work. It was just that it didn't feel complete. For me, understanding the characters' special abilities and how they work was more akin to trial and error rather than an explanation. Now this isn't an issue if you have history with the game, but those new to this will find it frustrating. Another issue is that clicking where you want your character to move to, or action to complete, is a bit buggy as well, as it doesn't always want to do what you ask. For instance, on a training mission I wanted my thief to scale back down a telegraph pole, but he wouldn't do it, and no matter how I tried. now. This then changed when I realised that the hitbox was off and I had to back away from the telegraph pole to get the option to do the said movement. In the middle of gameplay this could have serious consequences as you may get spotted or lose your grip and fall. You see this game doesn't have a pause function, it's old school so timing here is critical on every single thing you do. For those that are new, the freedom to use these characters any way you choose is the bulk of the fun of the Commando's gameplay experience. The Green Beret can stealthily dispatch foes and hide under soft areas to get the drop on enemies. The Sapper is an explosives guru who can employ grenades to take out clusters of troops. The Sniper is of course good at taking out enemies from afar without being seen. The thief can loot supply crates and pickpocket enemies, perfect for gaining access to new areas of the map, and the seductress can keep enemies engaged. Then there is the diver and the driver which are pretty self explanatory, with the last being the spy who can disguise himself as an enemy soldier to infiltrate locations or poison troops. There is something really satisfying combining all these together and watching the enemies fall under your perfectly laid plans.
Now, during my playtime, I did come across bugs that, when I researched, are remnants of the original that still hasn't been fixed. On mission two, I couldn't get a cutscene to pop, and after a bit of searching, I found I had to do a particular task with a specific character in order to make it work, though I will admit these are rare. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy my time replaying this classic. I did. It was that the current bugs, some even new, did hamper the experience. Which for me is a shame as I feel this game needs new gamers to experience on how us old folk used to play with real time tactical games in order to understand them but also allow them to enjoy the current iterations. Another big hit to the game is the removal of co-op which I do miss and this was a great addition that for me at least was a core factor of the original game. Praetorian's gameplay on the other hand feels a lot more polished and in turn for me was a better game in the bundle. The campaign focuses exclusively on the Romans narrative with the two other factions, the Egyptians and Barbarians, playable in skirmish mode. Praetorians differs from your typical RTS formula of building your base, gathering various resources as well as managing your army. The game solely focuses on unit tactics and strategies. Army units are trained in a garrison which you need to build a town or village, with a commander unit required to be there to oversee this recruitment. Then you take said army units and use them to conquer the surrounding enemies with each unit's specialised formations to win the day. Careful understanding of each unit's abilities is paramount. For instance, the spear units have two formations, one which is perfect at close combat units and one that is great for countering mounted units. Being overrun by horse units from the front, well, set them to a mounted formation, with maybe another unit set to close combat behind should the enemy switch tactics. Fact in that you can also choose which direction to place your units and you can see how quickly in depth things can become. This is only the tip of what you can do, with there being about 10 specialised units for you to play about with to ensure the perfect army combination of defence and aggression. Another key element in the game is how terrain comes into play, as maps have been designed for you and your enemies to use specific locations in dominating the battlefield. For instance, high ground is perfect for archers, and if you build a tower on top of that, you gain even more range on attacking enemies. Or why not keep a heavily armoured squad hidden within the trees to take any unsuspecting foes making their ways towards you. Now some terrain can't be traversed by particular units, which could be very useful by either side when setting out strategies. There are counters to all these elements like scouts for hidden units etc, and it will require you to slow down and plan carefully if you wish to succeed in your mission. Skirmish is where you can really play with the in-depth tactical elements freely, and with three different factions this provides a lot of fun. All three factions have unique, basic and specialised units with different strengths and weaknesses. Romans don't have the best cavalry, but have strong infantry and legionnaires. Ghoul units are expensive to recruit with berserkers and warriors being really strong offensive units, but have no formations. Egyptians are cheaper to recruit and regenerate stamina faster, but lack in strength. They do have cavalry and chariots that can be churned out quickly, which compensate for their soldiers being weaker. Overall, I found myself enjoying the gameplay for Praetorians more due to all the features of the original being kept and a control system that was really smooth and worked well on console. So what about the graphics? Well, Commando's graphics are lovely to look at and those that have played the original will see a visual improvement without a doubt. However, 
I must say for an authentic World War II game, there has been some seriously heavy censorship, with a lot of the Nazi and Japanese iconography being removed from the game. This in turn makes the game's missions lose their authentic World War II look, and in turn makes them look like they could be set in almost any time period after World War I. Map locations look crisp and gorgeous with their new visuals, however I did notice that some elements have been missed. On PC you could get multiple windows of your commandos, allowing you to monitor several areas at once. Here they have also been removed. And I did notice some heavy pop-ins here and there, plus the opening FMC sequence stuttered more than a car with a blocked exhaust, even on the Xbox One X. Praetorian's visuals are also suitably upgraded, and even though the maps themselves are a little bare early on, they do hold up extremely well. Here though I found almost no pop-ins or graphical errors, and general army movement was as smooth as butter. Overall textures are pretty good despite the models being notably low poly, and no new elements have been added. I would have liked to see an increase in foliage and surface detail, as this would have made the ground a little bit more effective than a simple overlay on a flat surface. Even the FMV sequence shows off the game's age, but to be fair, it doesn't detract from the game itself, and unlike Commandos, was smooth. Graphically, both games have only had an HD upgrade to ensure the history of the game's visuals are retained, with focus on reusing a lot of the assets, like models and sounds from the originals, whilst improving textures and lighting. So, what about the sound? Well, Commando's sound is pretty much spot on, though again I did find the odd bug where sound went missing or just didn't play. Overall though, the authentic enemy voices and hearing your Commando's banter each other brought back a nice nostalgia feeling that really helped with the engagement. Similarly, Praetorian's sound is exactly like the original, which in terms of today means the music can be a bit repetitive, though the voice acting is still pretty good. Nothing as far as I can tell has been changed, so don't expect anything to wow you in the sound department. And this leads me on to the rating of the bundle. Now I rate games in order of avoid, on sale, great purchase and must own. My rating for Commandos 2 and the Praetorian's HD Remaster Bundle is... On Sale. This really is a visual bundle with nothing new or elements added that will ensure its long term playability once completed. It will help some new gamers experience old school games, which paved the way for the more modern RTS and RTT found today. And yes, they still are fun. Hard, but they are still fun. The game is currently priced on Xbox at £34.34 £34, or approximately $40, and depending on skill and patience would give you about 60 hours worth of gameplay to potentially clear both games' campaign missions. Combine this with the multiplayer element with two other factions on Praetorians, and you do have a good amount of hours. For me though, the clear winner is Praetorians, with Commandos 2's bugs and heavy censorship really bringing the package down. I'd personally recommend buying Praetorians on its own, or wait for the bundle to come down in price to a roughly around £25 or $30. That being said, I'm excited for Commandos 3, and what elements they have learnt from the remasters, and how will this translate into the next generation of games. Well ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I do hope you like this review, and if you do, please like, share and subscribe if you so wish. And if you would like to put some notes or even just a comment in the comment section, I do like reading them. Anyway, have a great time gaming, and I'll see you all again soon.